Hey DIYers, today we got five tools that maybe you're gonna want in your DIY tool arsenal. One, well, two of these I definitely think you're gonna want. One, it'll be kind of nice. And the other two, well, you'll see. So our first tool is gonna be these thread identifiers. So what is this? Well, it's just what it says. So with this tool, what you do is you determine the nut size on this end, and in here you determine your bolt size. So it comes in metric, and standard sizes. And to identify it, it's kind of nice. The blue spacers are metric and the red spacers are a standard size. Your metric sizes come as small as 1.2 by 0.25 and as big as 24 by three. Your standard sizes, they also come very small. The smallest comes as a 1-64, all the way up to as big as a 112, and every size in between. Now it's kind of nice, they come with these little Ziploc baggies that you can keep them in if you like. The nice thing about being on these little cables like this is you got somewhere to hang them. Put your metric on one side, standard on the other side, and there they are, hanging and ready and handy for you. So how do these little gems work? So I got some random nuts and bolts here, and basically, so well, let's take this one here. I have no idea what size it is, but but let's try and figure it out. Is it standard? Is it metric? I don't know. Those are all too big. This size, oh, we have a winner. And you look right on there, it tells you it's a half by 13. So you know that's a standard. In which case, this bolt fits in the other end, same way, half 13. Now you're thinking, what about those screws that come as like eights and sixes and fours? Well, I got a set of 632s here. Let's test it out and see. Let's look for the 632. There's a 632 right here. Take our little bolt. 632, put it in, goes right in, it's tight, fits. You think, oh, that's small, it might be easy to screw up and get the wrong size. Well, I don't think so. No, nope, won't fit in there. Let's try this one. It fits, but it's too loose. I got a little square nut. Should work the same for it. You just start looking for the size that you think it might be close to. None of those are big enough. It's tight. That's an 832. Let's see, that fits, seems a little loose. Well, it's definitely not that. Maybe it's metric. So let's go over here to the metric. It's kind of nice around these little wire loops so you can't lose them. Nope, doesn't seem to be metric. Looks like it's a standard size. Well, it looks like the 832 is the size it's gonna fit. It'll work for wing nuts. Let's see what size this is. Again, I don't know if it's metric or standard, but we're gonna find out. And there we go, metric. That's an eight by 1.25 is what that is. Which means that bolt there ought to fit on the other end, and it does. Now, just in case you're concerned that maybe it's not a metric, it just happens to fit and it's a standard size, well, let's go over here and see. Seems like it ought to be the right size, but nope, it won't go in. So basically what you can do is say you need a dozen of these. You just determine it's a 1024. You can either A, go online, check your local home center. Do they have these 1024 screws that you want? If so, great. Go on down there, get it, and go. Another nice feature be, say I got this clamp here and I'm missing the nut. I got the the bolt, but I'm missing the nut that goes on here. And you want to replace it. Well, easy. Just take the nut like I got here and let's start hunting for the size. I'm going to guess this one's going to be a metric, but we could be wrong. Yeah, see that hit in the quarter by 20, but it doesn't thread in very well. So let's chuck the metric side out. And what do you know? We have a winner. That size happens to be a, a six by one. Again, go online. They got a bolt for it. Great, you go pick it up. And there you have the thread identifier. Now, I don't quite remember where I got these, but if I do remember, I'll put a link down below in the comments. And this might not be a tool that you're gonna use every day, but it's one of those that when you do need it, you're gonna be glad you had it. And I've used it two or three times. And again, I'm glad I had it. It saved me a lot of time and headache. Now, this next tool, you're definitely gonna want in your arsenal, and that is a hole saw kit. Now, this happens to be a 14-piece carbide tip hole saw kit. The nice thing about this is it can do wood, plastic, cement, board, concrete blocks, brick, and ceramic. This I believe I got at Lowe's. While I haven't used it yet, I did get it when I thought I was going to need it. But it is nice. Comes in this nice case, which I like. It's compact. Comes with two different bits. You need to look at them closely before you use them. This one's going to be your standard bit for, say, wood. And this bit here is going to be your bit for, say, ceramic, concrete block. The difference is, is in the tip. As you see here, this one's got just your standard type drill tip bit. Whereas this one here has a piece at the end of it that you use to get through your masonry type materials. Now the instructions are on the back as to how to use, but it's very simple and it's really nice. So this here is, let's say the chuck to go on the drill. Basically this is gonna fit in here and this is gonna push this button. It's gonna go down to the locks in that slot. The actual drill on itself, Basically, you're just gonna screw this in. You see these two little prongs here, they retract. You put this in, you'll screw it on, and when you get it to the tightness 
it needs to be, you'll just back off until that slaps in there. Now you're all set, put in your drill and drill away. One of the features they talk about, as you see right here, is the rapid core ejection. And basically all you do is push this button, push your bit in, and out comes the plug. That makes it handy, because if you ever had to use one of these that didn't have this, sometimes to get the core out of there, it is a royal pain in the rear. The bits are tipped with tungsten carbide, which is how it's able to go through the masonry type materials. The sizes are listed on the front, but it goes from an inch and three eighths all the way up to a four and a half inch hole. While I haven't used these drill bits yet, let's test and see how well it does. We'll drill a hole in this two by four here. First thing, that bit goes in really nice. It ought to since it's never been used. Now, if at all possible, when you're drilling a big old plug out like this, it's nice to start from one side and finish from the other so you don't get a bunch of tear out. That worked really nice. Let's try the ejection part. Push this in, out comes your plug. Now, a couple of other features they, they give you directions on the back of it as to how to do, which is kind of nice, and the others probably do it too. I hadn't really thought about it until they showed me. And that is one, say I got this hole here is an inch and three eighths. Determine, oh crap, that's the wrong size hole. What do you do? You just grab the size you need. Now, I will tell you, it's gonna have to be big enough that this will fit in, because here's inch and three eighths to inch and a half, and this won't fit inside there. So I bumped it up to an inch and three quarters. Put it on just like before, twist it on. Put your old one inside, twist it on the arbor like so. Put your drill bit on. The drill bit that you used goes in the hole and your new drill bit's on the outside. And again, you can go from both sides. And just like that, I got an inch and three quarter hole. Now, as you may have noticed when I was drilling this, I had a little bit of a hard time holding on. Because of these big holes, it isn't gonna wanna grab your drill and snap your wrist off, but you'd be better off if you can, piece something like this, clamping it down so you got two hands on the drill to hold it to drill the hole. Another nice feature about this, which I didn't realize I could do until I read the back of this, is drilled angled holes. So basically you chuck it up like you normally do, push the drill bit all the way back, whatever your piece of lumber is, start a pilot hole at your angle. Now slide the bit down, put it in that hole. And just like that, we've drilled an angled hole. Now that's a four by four, and naturally this isn't gonna go all the way through. It gets close, but it won't go all the way through. But we safely and successfully drilled an angled hole. If I wanted to drill this all the way through, I'd have to get a bit that's longer and drill the hole so it comes out the bottom, and then I could just take, put this on and go through it. I got a concrete block here. Let's see how well it drills through that. Remember, you gotta get your bit out that's for drilling in your cement. It's got the different tip on it. Now I got just the same inch and three eighths bit here. Actually did a fairly good job. Now, I didn't drill all the way through this just for time. And it'd probably be best with material like this to use an actual hammer drill if you have one. This has a hammer drill setting, but it really didn't kick in. But it'd be easier probably to drill and faster with a hammer drill. But even without it, it did a fairly good job. But here's the trick you're all gonna be asking, and I know it. Now that I used that for that, how much did it screw up the bit for doing it in wood? I don't know, let's find out. I'll just take this same four by four, same bit. Now I had to change out the drill bit, remember, because this bit here is for masonry and this one's for wood. I didn't see any difference drilling in the wood the second time after using it in the concrete. Here's a new one that's never been used and the one I used and the carbide other than having the paint off of it looks the same, don't seem to have damaged it. This is definitely a tool set you'd like to have in your DIY arsenal. They say you may not use it much, but when you do and when you need it, it's great to have it around. Now our next tool is called a point-to-point -point equidistant measuring gauge. Basically, it's kind of a layout gauge. And I got this from Empower Tools, and I'll leave a link down below if you want to check it out. The last two tools we have to talk about came from the same company. Now, it looks like some of you, how did I wind up with this tool and the other tool I'm going to show you? Well, kind of like I got something else off the website. You know, these showed up, and I went, hmm, that looks kind of neat. I think I'll need to use that. Let me get it. Now, I haven't used it before till now. It's kind of a nice tool to have in your arsenal. So what is this? This basically is kind of a layout tool. Say you want to drill holes to put dowels, and you want them at equal distance, and say this block of wood. Well, that's what this layout's for. Or say you want equal distance holes, but you only want three. Well, that's what you can use this for. Or how many can I get in this distance? Well, in this case, from end to end, you can get one, two, three, four, five holes in there. Designed for right and left handed. This notch out and eat at the top and the bottom, the direction that points tells you whether you're using it for a left-handed person or a right-handed person. So for this here, because these are open, let's say to this direction, it's for a right-handed person. So that would be for me. If I happen to be left-handed, it'd be the other one. Now, it probably doesn't really make any difference, but it's just kind of your preference on what you have. So how do you set this up. This is your center post here, your centering guide. So it's got one, two, three, one, two, three. So you can find the center of a board 
and you can lay out the board into however many sections you want. Comes with these little handles here that you put on. Probably don't need these, but it comes with them, so what the hey. So there's little holes in these screw knobs here. You put these in, slide the little rubber back over the end, and now you've got something to hold on to to tighten it up with. So how do you find the center of the board? And we're going to check and see if it truly finds the center of the board. And if nothing else, it does have instructions on the inside. So here's how it works. So this board here is like 15 and 9 sixteenths inch long. Yes, while you could divide all that up and figure it out in your head and do it, you could do it that way, but that involves doing fractions and stuff. Or what you do, the bottom of the notch, you set up on the edge of the board like that, tighten it up, and then remember I said this was your center post. We'll just take and make a mark right here, and we'll measure that. That turns out to be this direction, we'll call it seven and three quarters. In this direction, it's just a hair over seven and three quarters. It did a fairly good job at finding center. You want to lay this out and put three dowels in here. Again, being right-handed, I put this notch right at the edge of the board and the fifth one, this edge, and we'll mark and let's measure. We're about three and seven eighths here, three and seven eighths, three and seven eighths. So we only wanted to do two spots. Well, that's fine. You just stretch it even further and there would be your two holes that you'd have to drill. Now, you don't necessarily have to have this specific one. There's other tools out there and manufacturers out there that make similar tools just like this that do the same thing. And it's not something you're going to use all the time, but it's going to be one of those that when you do need it that one or maybe two times, you're going to wish you had it. Otherwise, you're going to have to go through and just measure out the spaces yourself, take a little extra time to do it. And I have it in my arsenal for the one time or two times I might going to need it. So our next tool is kind of a two-in-one tool, and that is it's a compass and a scribing unit. The compass part of it, you're probably not going to need very often, but maybe you are. The scribing tool you will need, especially if you're doing any kind of countertop or cabinet work. As it is like this, it's a scribing tool. You loosen this little nut here, off comes the plastic cap, tighten this up, and you got a metal point to use as a compass. And basically you just stick this on here. Pencil doesn't come with it. You have to put your own pencil in there. Describe your circle. Now this will go as wide as about a 12, 12 and a quarter inch circle. You stretch it all the way out. Now for the scribing part, you want this little plastic cap on there. And basically this will sit against whatever you're scribing off of. And then your pencil will set your width and you can actually loosen this screw up a little bit, make it easier, tighten the screw up so it'll hold it in that place and you don't have to worry about it. And you just go along and scribe whatever it is you're doing. So let's say I wanted to cut this block of wood so it fit against the house. Get my scribing tool set like I want and just run it along and there you have your scribe line. Now you just take your jigsaw like I did, cut along your scribe line and just take it and voila it fits. Now I know you're going to see on Instagram and even YouTube where they can just take a washer, it doesn't have to be this big, pencil, put it in the hole and do the same thing scribe it that way and you can do that you don't need my fancy tool to do that that's fine i just got it because it can do the compass and that and it was kind of a fancy little tool to have that's why now our last tool it's kind of a luxury tool most of you probably won't see much need in it but i thought it was neat and i bought it on a whim and obviously it wasn't too expensive i wouldn't have bought it but it's called a trammel set and it has a couple nice little features now it's designed to be used a couple different ways you can set it up to do circles and basically it comes with the pencil you do just like the other you'd put your loosen this nut here and get the pencil down to where it needs to be tighten this up and then it comes with this type of insert that's got a point on it that you just loosen up with this in here set it down it's beveled at the bottom down here you put it on the bevel point put in there tighten this up and then what you can do combination square here you can take the ruler part out of it like this and it's actually designed to slide over those and you can loosen this nut up and this edge here finds where your point is so right there put that at 11 so say we want a 10 inch circle we put that at six because this flat edge here corresponds with that point and that point stick this so that your point in your substrate get your pencil so it's touching hold on to this end Inscribe your circle just like that and we've got a 10 inch circle the other nice thing about this though is you can take this point out you could put another pencil in here if you wanted put your carpenter square back on and let's say you wanted two layouts i don't have a second pencil so we'll say we want one line there another line here and you could just take this right along the edge two lines right where you want them other thing you can do comes with a part that has a blade on it and actually once this blade this razor blade gets dull it comes with extra blades you can 
break off to put in here and an Allen wrench to put them in. Feed this in, there's a little bitty notch in here until you feel the set screw hitting in that notch. You'll kind of have to go back and forth and you'll feel it kind of catch. And the reason it has to hit in that notch is because it sets this blade up where it needs to be. You can do the same thing and draw scribed circles with it this way. The, really the nice thing that this is for, put a carpenter square back together, set this at whatever length and you could set it against there and actually cut. It doesn't have to be paper, it could be cardboard, whatever. Or you could do the same thing, take your pencil out, put your point in for your compass, set your point, and then just cut out your circle. And you can make it whatever length you want. You're only limited by the length of the ruler. And it doesn't have to have this groove in it. So if you've got another flat ruler that's three foot long, well now you got a way to make a six foot circle. Or cut out a six foot hole and say a piece of cardboard. It's not a must have. It's kind of a, oh, that's kind of neat. I'll get that. It doesn't cost much. And I got some projects coming up. I might need it. Kind of a tool. Now all three of these tools here came from the same place. Like I say, I'll leave a link down below. I'll try and find a link for these and put down there in case you want this. Say I got this at Lowe's or Home Depot. I'll see if they still have it and I'll put a link for it. But here's your five tools that maybe you want to have in your tool arsenal. Like I say, I think this is definitely a must. You're going to want this. I think these are a nice add-on. No, you're not going to use them all the time. I don't know, maybe you are, but it's a very handy little set. Uh, these other three, yeah, they're kind of a luxury item, if you will. So let me know down in the comments, is there any tools you have that maybe you ought to have in your DIY tool arsenal? And I'll see if I have any been eyeballing this DIY woodworking shirt or this DIY hat. I'll leave a link down below for that too. And go check those out along with some other designs that are on there. If you're interested in seeing other tools you might want as a DIYer, click on this playlist right here. So until next time, be safe and happy DIY.